This video was published by mbkpinternational.com. In this video, we're going to talk about um, general maintenance and greasing on the um, Guillotine XPC19 Pro. Um, you will need some gr grease, and you just basically need a multi purpose lithium grease. I got this for like five bucks at an auto parts store. Um, you can buy them online, but tend, from what I've seen, they tend to be a little more expensive because of shipping and all that. But any, any auto parts store, you can buy these for around five bucks a can. And you just need a general, multi purpose, general purpose lithium grease, bearing grease. You don't need none of the high temp stuff, high temp bearing grease or waterproof or anything like that. This is just, these are slow moving parts on here. And it just takes a, a, a basic general multi purpose lithium grease is all you really need. Another good grease to have is for this to grease one area here that I like instead of this. I mean, you could use this, but I'd like to have a little silicone grease at that white silicone grease. I'll show you some of that later. But um, And I use just use a toothbrush to, to grease some of these areas. It's, I found this easiest. To, the smaller the head, the better, because of, to get into tight places. But that's what I use. If you have a different brush that you like, you can use that as well. Um, first thing you want to do is just unplug this from power. You gotta, it's best just not to mess with it when it's on until you need to. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to go back and we're going to take the, the back table off. So we're going to, to get to a lot of this, you're going to just need to remove this um, safety cover here. And it's just going to be four screws, one on each corner. And we'll go ahead and pause it. And okay, we just got this back cover off. And basically, um, one of the main things you need to grease is, the, is that there's a screw rod that this travels on this paper push front to back. There's actually two rods. You got this chrome rod, and one, the one below it is the screw rod. And it's hard to see in this video, so I will go ahead and take this off just to show you. But generally, you don't need to take it off if you've got a nice thin um, brush that can go in there easily. You just put a little bit of grease on this, and you just slide it in there like that, and then and then I'd rotate it and just grease the rod while it's moving. This is easiest for me. But I will take this. I'm going to pause it again. I'm going to take this table off so you can get a better look at what it is. But you don't necessarily need to take this table off for the most part unless you don't have a, a, a brush that will fit in here easily into this gap. If you don't can't find anything like that, don't have anything, but like I said, all I use is a toothbrush. Then, Or if you just want to open it up and see what else is going on in there, you can take this table off one side or you can take both, but one side is usually all you need. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and do that now, but before you do that, you're going to have to move this paper push to get this table off. you got to move it to around the six inch mark. Five or six inch mark is what I found is the best to take the tables off. So I'm going to go ahead and um, plug this in and move it to the five or six inch mark. We can pause it now. Okay, I went ahead and just turned it on and I moved this paper push to the five inch mark. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this crown off and then you're going to take this back table off. And all you need for that is a Phillips screwdriver. So on the crown, all you got is two screws on each side. So just I'm going to move them on this side and remove them on the other side. And we'll go ahead and pause it while I do that. Okay, I took the screws off on both sides. Those two are on that side are gone, the other two on the other side are gone. You want to make sure your cutter's unplugged from power. And from there, you should just be able to lift this crown straight up. If you if it's just you, you can hook it on this side here and unplug it. it looks like that one came unplugged already, so it doesn't hang quite as there it is right there. If you lift up too high, it will just unplug itself. But it, sh it was plugged in right there. This one's just not very long. But typically you'd have some person just unplug it by hand when it's this high. But if you just lift it up, it'll just unplug itself. It's not a big deal. So I'm just put it to the side and you're done with that. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remove this back table here. And you can pick any side, but I'm just gonna remove this side here. Go ahead and you got these screws, you got two there, you got three down the side here, and you got two up front. They, these are easier with a short screwdriver, but you can get them with a long screwdriver. It's just a slight angle. But It's not too difficult to get it with a screwdriver. There's that one there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take all these off on this table while we pause it. Okay, okay I've already got them all off. There was, there's three down the side here. One, two, three. Two in the back. One, two. And then the two in the, the front. One, two. And once that's... One thing you want to do when you're doing this is just... This is your paper push. You don't want to be bumping it or anything. Because if you, if you hit it hard enough one way or another, you can knock off your your paper angle, that cut angle that it's doing, because that's what gives it its, its cut angle. And if you hit it hard enough, it could potentially slightly um, change that cut angle. So just slide it back nice and easy. And it will it will go back a couple inches and it will hit hit a, hit a, um, a beam there that, that's under this on the back here. So once it gets to there, you just gotta lift up the back. And here it is under here. 
you just got to clear that beam there. And once, just to clear the back of the cutter, and then you can just slide up nice and gentle. Now again, this is only if you can't get the get it in there to do it yourself. I'm taking this off to show you what it looks like in here, to show you what your grease is, because it's hard to see from just looking down here if this thing is on here. So I want you to see what it's doing, what we're actually greasing. So I'll do it both ways. I'll do it this way and I'll do it the other way. Here's your screw rod here. And um, what I like to do is when you turn this on, this thing will move backwards. With, even with the crown not on. The crown's off, so it, it, you can't control it. So actually what I want to do now, it might be easier. I'm going to put the crown back on. Because I want to have it um, open so, I can, so you can see that. Yeah, there's probably plug that you just plug it in there. You just got to make sure you get all the prongs. And don't make sure you don't unplug it when you kind of lift it up a little bit. So I'm just putting it back on so I can control the paper push. And, and I'll show you why here. I'll go ahead and um, plug this back in. And it's just going to move to its last position. Or no, it's going to reset itself. So what it's going to do is going to go down and recalibrate itself. And move back to the last position is at, which is five inches where I set it to. So I'm going to go ahead and move it all the way forward now to around two inches. Maybe not, even, maybe not quite there because this thing can wobble a little bit and when it doesn't got this it can wobble and, and it can hit, hit um, something and break some of those tabs. So I think about the further she should go without that table on is about three inches. Three inch mark. Okay, and one thing I do, you got this silicone, this silicone grease. It's usually a white grease, it's pretty thin. It's, it's thick, but it's you don't need much of this stuff. Let's, let's see. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to grease this screw right here. You could use the other grease I showed you. That um, It's a very, very, very thin coat. So all you're doing is using your hands on this. You're putting about as thin as coat as you can get on it and just try to get it everywhere on it. I think silicone works better for this, this but if you don't have silicone, you can always buy it all the parts store too. They're only like a few dollars for a little tube of silicone grease. But you're basically looking to get it just the thinnest coat you can on there. And then here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to get this grease here. And I'm just going to put a little bit on this, like so. A little, little glob on it. And I'm going to, let's see this cutter, it's on right now. So, with the, with the paper all the forward, I'm just going to, when you turn this cutter on, you turn, I'm going to be turning it off and turn it back on. When I do that, it's going to start moving back and recalibrating itself again. So while it's doing that, I'm going to be running this up and down the screw rod as it's spinning. That's the best way i found to do it. So right now I'm just going to unplug it. And then wait a few seconds, I'm going to plug it back in, and it's going to start moving pretty quickly. And during that, so I'm going to have my grease ready. Now, if this table's on here, you can just reach in here. See, now I'm just, I'm just going up and down the thing here. Then it's going to go back to that two-inch mark, so I'm going, to get, I'm going to get another gob ready here. You can do it on the front a little bit, too, as it's coming back. That's what I like to do. And then get another little gob and put just some more on the back here. Get it all the way up and down it. Try to get it as much as possible there and I'm gonna probably do it one more time because I didn't get the front good enough unplug it plug it back in get a little gob on it it'll start to build up on the back if too much builds up on it you can wipe it off but I'm gonna get some of this front here just going back and forth while it's going and I don't know if it, when I grease this whole thing with silicone you, you want to grease it front to back too. I think I'm not positive, but I think I just greased this side here. So when you do that, you're gonna. I pretty much got both sides of that thing. So now I'm just gonna move it all the way to the back and then stay back there. And then I'm just gonna take a little more. Just a t it just takes a touch of silicone, and I'm gonna grease it again on this side with a just in case I, there's some areas I didn't get. And you, if this table's on here, you can you know, reach in here with your finger and grease the top and even hook your finger around it a little bit and get the bottom. Just be careful, you know, this, I don't think it's usually not sharp, but there could be a sharp burr on there, so just don't cut yourself on that. 
So there's advantages to taking this off. You get a little more room back here. You get a little more stuff to play with. And there's advantages just to keeping it on. It's obviously easier just to keep it on and do it. If you take it off, you get to see what's going on. And I want to take it off to show you what you're actually greasing. And we'll go ahead and that's basically it for your screw rod. I did front and back why it was moving. And I did the front and back of this with, with silicone. Again, you could use this, but again, it's very thin coat. I like silicone better on that. It seems to be a little slicker for it, but either one would work. Um, we're going to go ahead and, um, since I got the front of that, we're going to go ahead and move this um, to the back to the 5 inch mark. Because I'm going to put the table back on. And then we're going to remove the crown again. So I'm going to turn it off and remove the crown. You, gotta, you want to turn it off when you're removing the crown. Okay. We're just going to get the table, we're just going to put the table back on. And this is the process again you know you just got that thing it's, it's got to, it's got to clear before it drops down on this and there so you're just putting it in place and you're just being very careful not to bump this hard or anything you just go nice and slowly under it there just nice and slowly forward and then it falls into place back here and then you should be good and just move it forward nicely and you got to just be careful on this you don't want to pinch this so it goes to the side if you come over here a little bit there's a notch there and that goes in, in that notch like that, so you're not pinching it. Okay, then kind of move a little bit forward here. When you go, it wants to hit this bracket, so you got to kind of put your finger in it and kind of lift it up here and, and slide it on top of that bracket there. Then just slide it back into place. You, you can move this back and forth. From, you just got to line up those screw holes. It looks like that's pretty good. They're lined up and line them up as good as possible. And then we're just going to start putting these screws in one at a time. And um, don't tighten them though. Just start each one. Go ahead and pause it while I start doing that. Okay, I got all the screws started. It's just I just start them all. You don't want to tighten any of them down until you get all of them started. And the reason for that is you sometimes the, there's, the screw holes are off just a hair one way or the other. And if they're not, none of them started, there's always some shifting you can do on this just a little bit. You can just shift it slightly one way or another. And that way, once you get them all started, you can like a lot of times you gotta like hit it to knock it to move it because it's kind of in here a little bit snug or hit this way or. A bit like this, knock it, to knock it, shift it one way or another to get. If you need to line these, these should all go in easy. They should go in fairly easy, no, no, without any. If they start going in hard, you're cross threading it. So just, they should all start very easy and go in very easy, and then you just snug them all down. It's just snug tight on all these, and and that's all you want to do. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna once you get them all in, I'm gonna snug tight all. I guess it's um seven of them. I'll go ahead and pause it for now. Okay, I went ahead and put these back, tighten all those screws back on. Um, one thing that this is a, a, a greasing and general maintenance um, for checking for things that need to be tightened or whatever. So um, since you put this back, if you took this off, you tighten screws. If you never took it off, just check all those screws on this table, all seven of them on this side. Just make sure they're all snug tight. They can come loose and, and cause rattles if you don't. And then you do the same with this crown off you get to, to get those front two, but if you can get most of them with the, there's another one on this side, you have to take the crown off to get it. Check all these screws when you got the crown off and make sure they're all snug tight on this table. You can also check these and make sure they're snug tight, but only do it when this is all the way back because if these did come loose, this tends to drop down and and if you tighten it when it's when it's dropped down, this will come back and start binding right here and, and start making a grind, binding noise. So if you let it go all the way back to the back and stay here and then snug, make sure they're snug tight, you can do that, but I would not, don't snug tight it when it's up front, just in case this got loose. If it's not loose, it wouldn't matter. But if it got loose, and you and you tighten it as it dropped down a little bit, and when this goes back, it's going to bind up. So again, you can snug tight these. Just make sure it's all the way back. The paper pushes all the way to the back when you snug tight them. But they should be snug tight. But this is just a maintenance video, is also you're taking for anything loose. Okay, and we're gonna. Um, that's basically it for the back. Except I do want to show you one more time, just. You don't have to take that table off. I wanted to take that table off to show you what we're actually greasing because you wouldn't be able to see it like this. It's basically mainly that screw rod. This one you can get with silicone, just rubbing it from the top and sides. And if you get maybe your little finger, you can hook it around the bottom and do it or whatever on both sides. Um, just some silicone grease front and back like we did with it like that and with it back here and get the front part of it. And then the, this would be, you would do the same process. You'd unplug it. You'd plug it back in. You'd have a little grease on here. Turn on, turn on. You'd have a little grease on, you'd slip it in here like that, and then you'd be going, you'd be running an uh, inch or two lower right on that screw rod while it's moving. And you can get another little more grease here, and you can do the front of it while it's moving back. So, 
it's pretty simple. I think I had it at five. You'd want to start around two to give yourself more, more room to, to keep greasing it. But do it a couple times, both front and back, if you want it to, and, and then get a little grease. And you can grease this rod front and back. And that's basically it on the greasing on the back, and just they're really well. You if you did open it up, you can check for anything else that's loose or looks looks wrong. And for the most part, these are the things that would loosen up during operation and cause rattles or whatnot. Um, also, this would also, so you can check these things here and, and you basically get a, a Phillips screwdriver on those and whatever I did with it. And you, you can look down this and you can see the screw there and just you can tighten it and there's one here too. Sometimes these are easier to get to the front ones when the crown's off, but sometimes you can get to it. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to tighten it down and this is over too far. You want to make sure there's a gap here. So I would start with the paper push forward and see there's a gap there. And you do the same thing on that side, make sure there's a little bit of gap there, just a slight gap. Just make sure this doesn't touch this. And just tighten it down. Then you can move your paper push to the back here. Make sure there's a gap there. If there's none, you can loosen a little bit and you can slide it over. You know, and make sure that that thing's not rubbing on this, making noise. So just make sure there's a gap and tighten each side down. Pretty simple on that. We're going to go to the front for greasing, the blade and, and clamp. And what you want to do on this is um, you want to just remove this top crown. You can pretty much get all the greasing on that from that. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and remove the top crown and we'll pause this video. Okay, we took the crown off and basically we're going to be greasing the um, your um, blade holder. Basically, this is basically the big thing here. It's holding the blades with blade holder. But just be very careful. That blade is sharp. No matter how much you use it, it's, it's still a very sharp blade. And you can cut yourself. It's like a giant razor blade. But anyway, we're gonna be greasing the, um, this upper assembly under the crown here, keeping it greased. First thing you wanna do is you wanna get a 10 millimeter, I got this special wrench, but you can get a 10 millimeter socket and wrench, and you wanna make sure these are all tight here, pretty snug tight. But they will loosen up over time. So you wanna make sure they're all tight. And these are what's holding your blade. And there's some, I think they're two and a half millimeters right on top there. And you can make sure those are snug tight too. It's all it takes is snug tight on these. There's three of them there. And it basically just pushes down on your blade. But you want to make sure these are tight before you get those. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and turn this on because there is one more screw there. And when you, when you don't got the crown on, it takes like four or five seconds for it to sense that it doesn't have a crown. It doesn't know what to do. So it waits four or five seconds. Then it just moves to the back and stays back here. The paper push on top and and you gotta wait for that before you can even try anything. But for that paper to go to the back, it'll stay there. And now I'm just gonna do a simulator cut and I'm gonna drop this down and let go of it. Just enough to expose that last one right there. And I'm gonna make sure it's tight. Cause this, this is actually the two end ones, that one just went behind there. These are the two most important to keep tight because if they get loose, they can come up and they can, they can jam into the side here and mess things up for you. And you can also jam into the side there, the two end ones. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm going to reverse it now with these two centers. I want to try to time it where it's almost at the exact bottom. Okay, it's pretty much at the bottom now. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to grease the... We'll come along to this side here, right here. There's, there's a channel here this goes, that this travels in right in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's that channel there. And all we're going to do is just grease that channel a little bit. Get a little grease on this. And I'm going to just grease that channel top and bottom as, as far down in there as I can go. We can do the same for this here. We're gonna grease the top and bottom, far down there if we can go. Get a little more grease on it. And I'm gonna grease these sides even here. See the sides there? That's traveling on, that'd be thin there. It doesn't take much. You don't wanna gob this, it'd be more thin there. You can put a little extra in this channel, but on these sides, you can't really gob it, just a thin layer. And then also on this plate, the back of this plate here, there's actually, sometimes there's grooves in those things and you kinda of just fill those grooves in, but you just wanna get a thin coat on this um, back of this plate too. And any grooves fill up with grease kind of helps it on both sides. So we'll go to the other side now. And I know I got the the channel inside. Now these are the sides of the channel, a thin coat on the sides of them. And then on the side on this plate here. Some more grease. Let's get that grease there good. Now we're gonna while it's down, you can get the you can get the screw rod here, both sides of it. Just a little bit of grease on both sides. A little bit of grease on both sides and you can move this this ain't moving all the way to the, sometimes i'll move all the way to the bottom when that when the crown's off so you can move it by hand just don't pinch yourself in these gears you can move it by hand down like so 
and you can get the whole thing a little bit better there. Just try to get behind it and stuff, and then go back up. You don't want to go up too far. You go up too far, it'll go past that sensor and then it'll go and air out. So when you're done with you can go a ways and then just go back down with it. Now let's, let's just go back down to where it was, somewhat where it was, because you don't want the sensor to it to miss the sensor. So get it down a little bit. It's not in the middle like that. Okay, once you're done greasing that. So now you can throw some grease in these screw holes here. So that's the greasing of it. Let's go to the Let's reverse this and bring this back up. So there's one you can get on this side too. And basically it's that same channel you're just coming at from the other side. And you're just doing the same thing. It's just you got these things here and then back of this blade. It'll just give you a different angle on them. And then the same thing. This is a little more difficult. There's a channel there. you got to worry about the blade. So it's kind of a little bit hard to get up in there without getting grease on the blade. You know what I mean? So I just try to get a little bit in there without getting too much grease on the blade. And you can't go on this side, so you're going to have to go to get the bottom of this plate, the back of this plate, a little more. Again, it's a little bit hard with that blade there, but you can get a little bit on the back of this plate too, from the bottom side. Just try not to get any grease on your blade. So that's pretty much your blade and your clamp as, as far as greasing. And this is, a, we're going to do, check while you're in here, you can check to make sure this is just, you don't want this all loose and everything where it touches when you squeeze hard where these two touch but you want it to go about halfway about like what it is now when you squeeze kind of hard you want a little bit a little bit of play in it but you don't want it to be flopping around where it comes off either and you don't want it to be so tight you can't even hardly move it. if that's the case you'd want to adjust this and that would be just loosening these four here and you can tap this with a hammer just lightly until it loosens up enough and if you go too far you can tap it this way with a hammer and then tighten these back down you also want to check make sure this is tight this is tight there is one more in here and you can move that by hand just there it is right there you can see it and these this one I think is a three and I think that's a four millimeter and I think this is two two and a half on there it could possibly be three two sometimes but I think usually it's two and a half three and four millimeters you can make sure those are all tight these are five millimeters and you can make sure those are tight and another thing you can do is um one more time I'm gonna lower the blade there's there's ones in here and I think they're two and a half again right there and there it, it just holds this pin in there because that pin were to back out and fall out then the, your clamp but there's, so there's one there two and a half a two and a half there and i think that's it on that to hold those pins in and that's pretty much it on that so let's move it back to the top so we pretty much got this upper crown area you got everything greased and we checked all the screws on it you got your blade screws you can check these these are five as well make sure those plates aren't getting loose that's they typically don't so it's not a common one that gets loose but you can check those and the next thing i want to do is go inside the electronic compartment so i'm going to Remove these six screws, three front, three back. It's better for a short screwdriver here, but you can get it with a long one the crown's off. It's a lot easier. Just, again, watch this blade. You don't want to touch it. Be very careful around that blade. I'm going to go ahead and take these six screws off. We're going to pause it now. Okay, I got the six screws off, three front, three back. Three back, three front. All you do is slide this out like that once those screws are off. Put this to the side somewhere. And I I have this plugged in. I should not have it plugged in. You want to unplug this when it's... When it's um, whenever you for sure whenever you're in this electronics department so don't ever get in here when it's plugged in okay there's a few things one thing you can grease in here and it's just basically a little grease on the toothbrush again and you're basically just greasing this gear here it's just it doesn't take a lot you can go around that and you can go around this little gear all the way around it and then try to get behind it here as much as possible you don't have to go all the way around it it, it pretty much just goes this way and then it comes back so it doesn't, the bottom part is, is not as necessary because when this, this thing will go this way down to the bottom, let's confirm that. We'll just make sure. I think I'm going to, it goes one direction other than I think it's that way. And you'll be able to see here what I'm talking about. It won't, you, only one side of this will need to be greased. Now you don't want to do this, but I'm plugging it in. I'm just going to be careful. But yeah, so it goes that, it, that second half of the gear never really gets, gets anything on it. So let's unplug it. Okay, I just unplugged it. Again, you just want to get back on this gear as far as you can that way. And back up in there as far as you can on the gear and, and all around this. Thin coat of grease, you know, you don't need a lot on it. Just this, and one thing I forgot to mention that I should have mentioned the first this video, you basically want to do this every three to 12 months. 
it really depends on how much you're using your cutter. If you're using your cutter 10 times a day or more, I would, I would do this every three months. If you're using your cutter like, you know, you know, one, one to five times a day or something like that, or I don't know, about five to 10 times a day, something like that, I would do it every six months. If you're only using it like one to five times a day, then I would do it, you can do it every year, I would say. But if you are using it, if you're using it a lot more than 10 times a day, you may, you know, you can, if you're using it, you know, 50, 100 times a day, you can up it to once every month because things that you're gonna, that's using a lot, lot. So anyway, um, that's how often you wanna do this. That should be in your manual, FYI. But that's all you need to grease. We're gonna move on to um, just checking. This is unplugged again from power. So you're basically gonna be checking these. This is a two millimeter. You wanna make sure these don't get loose. That's two millimeter and that's, there's two of them on there. And when it's unplugged, you can move this by hand. Two millimeter, two millimeter, and you just make sure those are tight. There's also one right back behind here. And you gotta move this thing again to get the other one. Another one right there. Two millimeter, two millimeter. And um, there's two behind this too on this on this there's a, there's a ring there and there's one and I think those are three millimeter I think and again there's one on one side I think another one on the other side yes it's hard to see but it's back there on that there's a there's one you can feel and you can feel there's two hex on it but anyway you get all one two three four five six you can make sure these are snug tight all these are snug tight snug tight snug tight all these um, you can go down make sure this coil snug tight make sure this is not rattling around or anything. Um, just, and then go down these, make sure they're all snug tight. Make sure you can always just make sure these are plugged in. With it. again, this is with this cutter unplugged. I'll be doing this with it plugged in. And that's basically it. I don't really see anything else on this. If these were loose here, you'd have to open this, these panels up, and I can make a separate video for that. And you can tighten those down inside there. But that's basically it. We're just going to go ahead and put this back together. Again, every anywhere from three to, to 12 months, you want to do this um, greasing and checking for tight bolts. These are very important. You may even want to check those every month, no matter how much you use it. Because if they get loose, if these two end ones get loose, they can jam on this and, and, and cause some serious damage to your cutter. So make sure those, that you especially keep these blade screws tight. And um, that should be it. Um, if your blade does break or get loose, we can do a video for that, but it's all it is is loosening these four and you can slide this up and down to get this blade off and push this down when these are loose to tighten it. If your blade is loose, I mean, I'm sorry, if your belt is loose there. This one feels, it might be a little loose, but it's just not too bad. I might snug it up a hair, but. Um, that's basically it. Um, this video was published by mbkpinternational.com.